So we're talking about uh, evaluating tail probabilities um, and tail probabilities, as the name suggests, uh, is the probability. Um, so for instance, in this case, graphically, this is the probability we're talking about, right? And this is the area under the curve of the tail of, of a certain PDF. Um, and you're just interested in finding the probability that the random variable lies in the tail um, range, if you will, right? So, in, in, so this is probability that the random variable is greater than some value x naught, right? And we said that um, in, in many cases, the CDF, which is related to the state probability does not exist in closed form, right? So we need, need some ways of, of approximating, if you will, um, these state probabilities. And one of the ways to do that is to derive bounds on them, right? So these are upper bounds, if you will. So the first one we did was Markov's inequality. And the Markov's inequality just simply states that the probability that the random variable is greater than some value x naught uh, is, is greater than, is less than equal to the, the, the mean value divided by, the mean value divided by x naught, okay? And, and for this to hold, so for, for, for this inequality, all you need is the mean of that random variable and you don't need to know anything else. Okay, distribution, kya thi, Gaussian thi, kya shape thi uski. You don't need to know the variance or any other parameter. All you need to know is, is a mean of that particular random variable, okay? Um, and, and we did a proof for this and ultimately, um, and then we did this example, which was corresponding to the age. Okay, let's say there's, a, there's, a, there's some population uh, and for that population, what we, the information that we're given is that the average age of that population is 78 years. And we were required to find the probability that a person lives to be more than 110 years old, right? And, and so we don't know anything else. So we apply Markov's inequality and we found that the probability that the person lives to be above 110 years old is less than 78 by 110, which is, which is the mean divided by X naught, which is 110. And that turns out to be 0.71. Right, um, so we said, Kitty, this is not a very tight bound, but it is a bound nevertheless. Right, it does tell us, Kiar, the probability that somebody is going to live to be more than 110 years old cannot be greater than 0.71. I mean, this is actually what the bound tells us. Okay, this this probability cannot be greater than 0.71. It is somewhere uh, less than 0.7. It could be anything less than 0.71. Right, that's that's why it's an approximation. Right. Uh, and that's why it's a bound and not an equality. All right. Um, and what we're going to do today is to derive some additional bounds. Actually, we're only going to do two of those. Um, and the first one is the Chebyshev's bound. Okay, Chebyshev's inequality. Anybody has heard of Chebyshev's inequality before? No? Okay. So the first thing here is the Markov's inequality. Uh, one of the points was the Markov's inequality holds true only when the random variable is non-negative, right? So it's only applicable to non-negative random variables. Uh, it is not applicable to random variables that are not non-negative. So any random variable can, that can take on negative values um, Markov's inequality is not going to hold for that. So that's an important point uh, to remember, right? So let's, let's begin today's inequality. So what we're going to start out with is, okay. Right, so this is Chebyshev's inequality. And as you would have guessed by now, Chebyshev was also uh, some person, right? So suppose that expected value of X, there's a certain random variable X uh, and we know the mean for that, right? And on top of the mean, uh, we also know that the random variable has a certain variance, right? So the two 
parameters that we know of the random variable are the mean and the variance. So this is opposed to Markov's inequality in which we said, in which was only a function of, uh, of the mean only, right? So now we know the mean as well as, so, so we have some additional information uh, and with this some additional information, we could expect, intuitively expect uh, that the bound is gonna be a little better, okay? So let me just state the inequality first before doing the proof, okay? Um, so if this is the mean and the variance, then the Chebyshev's inequality just says that the probability that the absolute value of X minus mu being greater than equal to X naught, this is less than equal to sigma squared divided by X naught squared, right? So this is what the inequality states, right? This is the result, right? Um, before doing the proof, let's just try to visualize what this represents. Um, so what this says is, okay, say if there's some distribution or some PDF of a certain random variable, which has a certain mean. So let's say this is the mean. I mean, this is not necessarily, uh, this does not have to be a symmetric distribution around me, take a mean, but, but this is just an illustration. So uh, who's gonna tell me here, uh, Muniba, okay, what does this probability represent? Here's a probability that you see on the left-hand side, right? This probability. What is this equal to as far as this curve is concerned, this PDF is concerned? Muniba, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Andy, so what does this probability equate to in terms of this PDF, in terms of the area under the curve? So we will define X naught and then X naught define kiya hoga, usse jitni better hoga, wo area se less than hoga. Jo X naught, sigma square pe hume given hoga, to sigma square over X naught se less wali safe probability. Yeah, so I'm 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 not interested in the right hand side for now. I'm just trying to see ki the left hand side just kaun bound kare. Wasn't me hai kya? I mean, is this a tail probability first off? And you remember we're talking about tail probabilities. Is this a tail probability really? or not? No, sir. Why not? So what is it, if not a tail probability? Hello. Di Maha. Uh, sir, I think it's probably the complement of the tail probability. Okay, so complement of the tail probability. Uh, yes, sir. So why do you think so? Why is this a complement of the tail probability? Uh, because uh, it would uh, be uh, x naught minus mu yeah. to x naught plus mu. So the probability of x being between these two uh, values. Okay. okay. So that would be basically in between the, the two values. So the probability that is x it lies between x naught Minus mu, if not plus mu. So that okay. would be the opposite of the probability. Okay, so you're, you're almost there, except k. So I think what you're saying is, okay, this is equivalent to, this event is equal to what? This event is equal to that x minus mu is greater than x naught, or, you, or x minus mu is less than minus x naught. Right? Yeah. 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 is greater than or equal to x naught means. Okay. Uh, if I have to check this out, right? If this is mu plus x naught, and this is mu minus x naught, Maha, could you mute yourself, please? Yeah. So these are the areas that we're talking about, a union of these two areas. Right? These two areas combined together, this is the probability that the absolute value of X minus mu is greater than or equal to X naught. 
right? So this is still a tail probability in the in in some sense, except that you can say that this is a is a double tail probability, if you will, right? Not only is a right hand side tail, but the left hand side tail as well. Okay, this is what the the left hand side is. Okay. Um, any questions here before I move on to the proof? All right, so let's do the proof here. So the proof is fairly simple um, and actually derives from the Markov's inequality, right? So I claim that this event that X minus mu absolute being greater than or equal to X naught is actually the same as this event that x minus mu whole squared is greater than or equal to x naught squared, right? These two are exactly the same. So there's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, mapping between the these two events. So the, the, these two events are exactly the same, okay? And therefore the probability of these two things are gonna be the same as well, all right? So we say that because the events are the same, that means the probability that x minus mu absolute is greater than or equal to x naught. This is actually equal to the probability that x minus mu whole squared is greater than or equal to x naught squared. Okay. Now, can somebody see the relevance of this to Markov's inequality? Can I go ahead and apply the Markov's inequality in some sense? Markov's inequality, if you remember, what is it? Okay, the probability that X is greater than or equal to X naught is less than or equal to expected value of X divided by X naught. Uh, and X has to be, capital X has to be a non-negative uh, random variable. So do you see the relevance here or, or the link here, D. Shoaib? We see concept of X minus mu to absolute mu was a that corresponds to capital X in the Markov's inequality. So it okay. will be just expected value of X minus mu uh, yeah. over X naught. Like in your square, so expected value of X minus mu cos square yeah. divided by X naught cos square. So Excellent. Excellent, right? So you can just simply directly apply the Markov's inequality here by treating X minus mu whole squared as a random variable. Okay? And X naught squared is that X naught in the random in, in the Markov's inequality. Okay. So this thing here, this thing here is actually a random variable. Right? And if this is a random variable, I know from Markov's inequality that this is less than or equal to is less than or equal to expected value of whatever that random variable was. And that random variable was X minus mu whole squared expected value of that, okay? And divided by, divided by what this number was, right? So this number is X naught squared, right? And what do you have in the numerator here? In the numerator, you nothing have, you have nothing but the variables, right? And this completes the proof. Right, as simple as that, okay? Now let's go back and apply this to that age example that we had, right? So consider that for the age example above, we also knew that uh, the variance in this case is, so the standard deviation is 15, right? So now you, you, now you have a certain population and in that population, you know that the average age of that population is 78 years and the standard deviation of, that, uh, of, of the age of that population is 15 years, right? Given this information, 
given this information, can you try to bound this probability that somebody lives to be above 110 years old? What do I do? So I've, I, I, I've, I've, I've been given the entire information. So I have the inequality uh, stated up above on your screen as well. Okay. Up, given that inequality, can you use the mean and the variance together to bound the probability that somebody lives to be above 110 years old? Okay. So what do you suggest I do? I mean, how do I go about this? Any any ideas, any suggestions? Q do you want me to pick somebody? Ghazi? Uh, I was just thinking that you pick all random variable to find yeah. X is equal to y minus mu whole square. Whole square. So uh, for, uh, forget about the whole square. Why? Because the 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 okay, inequality or the inequality that we know of is uh, the probability that x minus mu absolute is greater than or equal to x naught. This is less than or equal to sigma squared upon x naught squared. Okay, this is something we're going to use, right? So the the only question is, okay, how do I use this for this particular problem? Uh, I was thinking, yeah, x is equal to y minus mu or random variable defined by. Huh. So okay. Directly Good. Okay, addition se aapka sigma square same rehta. Yeah. Or uh, okay. mu ke andar mein lagta hai. Yeah, so so you you're you're almost there. Uh, Shoaib, aapne khadat kara kiya tha. Ji sir, maybe me keh raha tha ki ye jo probability of x minus mu greater than x naught hai, it's a union of two events. Yeah. So if you, matlab iski jagah union of two events dal de. Yeah. So ab uh, for ek event jo hai, uska mu side pe le ja sakte so that yeah. might help. Okay, so the, the question then is, so you see this, this is something I need to use, right? So this is something I need to use. X here is the age, that I know for sure. Okay, uh, the question is, what should X not be? I mean, the, because that's a choice I need to make and the choice of X not should be such that somehow this probability of X minus mu absolute greater than X not is a function of probability that X is greater than 110. Okay, that's what I am trying to go towards, right? So, so I know that probability of absolute of X and mu I know is 78. Okay, this is greater than equal to X naught, right? Many, I need to choose some x naught such that I have some bound on x, which is looks which looks something like x is greater than or equal to one hundred and ten, right? What do you think x naught should be? So I would say choose x naught to be such such that seventy eight plus x naught is one hundred and ten. Okay, and why would that be? So there's a there's some reverse engineering, if you will. Okay. So why don't we choose X naught equals 32, right? And you just look here. So this would be the probability that absolute value of X minus 78 absolute is greater than or equal to 32. And this is a union of two events, right? It was a probability of the union of two events. This is the probability that X minus 78 is greater than or equal to 32 right? Plus the probability that X minus 78 is less than or equal to minus 32. 
So this is that, and why have I done a plus? I mean, I've skipped some steps here. Oh, actually one step here only. And this was union of two events. And those two events were mutually exclusive so that the probability of the union of two events could be written down as the, as the, the sum of the probability of those two individual events. Okay. Um, so therefore, this is equal to the probability that X is greater than or equal to 110 plus the probability that X is greater than uh, less than or equal to. So it's 78 minus 32, which is 46. Okay. They can, uh, so I have what I needed. I have what I needed. This is what I needed. But this is something extra. What do I do now? Any ideas? So I then say, since probabilities are always positive, right? This sum of these two probabilities is obviously going to be less than or equal to the probability that X is greater than or equal to 110. Right, and, and the reason is what? Once again, that the probability that X is less than or equal to 46 is actually a positive number, right? So the sum of two positive numbers is going to be greater than or equal to that one of those two positive numbers, okay, which are being summed up, right? So my conclusion therefore is that the probability that X is greater than equal to 110 is greater than equal to the probability that X minus 78 absolute is, oh, sorry. Yeah, I've, I've, my apologies. So this is greater than or equal to, okay? And therefore this is less than or equal to. Right, any questions here? Stop me. I, I can stop here and, and take questions if there's confusions. G mm. Sir, could you um, probability of x less than 46 go uh, 1 minus probability of x greater than 46 plus a greater of Markov's inequality is called letter? Yeah. Yeah. So then would we be better off? Matlab, would we get a better bound? No. Uh, usme then ab, ab, you would be stuck because wo minus sign aata uske saath. Okay. 1 minus kis ka? Ah, so I think my screen sharing. So one minus आ तो फिर वो inequalities के sign बदल जाते हैं that and that becomes a problem. Okay, thank you. Sir. Okay, you get it. So yes, sir. Okay, so let me. But uh, so Shweb, that's a, that's a, actually by the way that that's a, that's a very good point, uh, but, and and I would strongly strongly urge you to try to do this. Okay, आप जो है x minus less than equal to forty six को one minus x is greater than equal to forty six लिखें और फिर उसको मज़िदा bound कर सकते हैं नहीं कर सकते हैं, ठीक है? It turns out कि जब वो जो bound है ना उल्टी तरफ होती है and that doesn't help us. Okay, All right. So this is uh, the conclusion that we get. There's a probability that somebody lives, lives to be a greater than 110 years old is less than equal to the probability that absolute of X minus 78 is greater than or equal to 32. And I know that this is less than equal to sigma squared upon 32 squared. And I've just applied Chebyshev's inequality here, right? And, and sigma squared, by the way, is 225 is 15 squared okay and this turns out to be let me look it up so this is 0 
right? So, uh, I mean, so the with, with the use of this Chebyshev's inequality, what we found is that the probability that somebody lives to be more than 110 is upper bounded by 0 0.2197. And this is from Chebyshev's inequality and using the mean as well as the variance of, of the density of the random variable. Okay. Now the question is, is this good enough? Mm, we don't know. I mean, how tight is this? We don't know, right? But we do know that this is tighter or this is a better bound than the one that we obtained with Markov's inequality, right? So Markov's inequality, remember it was 0. 0.72 or something, right? And this one is 0. 0.2197, which is, which is much, much tighter. We know it can be 20% less uh, say, come a chance because somebody's going to live to be above 110. This may not be good enough uh, still, right? Because in reality, we know that not, um, I mean, a lot less than 20% of people live to be above 110. Okay, even in societies where, even in societies where the average is 78. Okay, G. Isha. Sir, is there a way to find a lower bound to this as well? Anji, there will, there may be ways. I'd have to think about it. There, I'm pretty sure there are going to be lower bounds as well. Okay, and that's actually one of the ways to show how good a bound is. Right? If you can somehow derive an upper bound, okay, and then a lower bound, and then you show that the upper bound and lower bound both are Right, so that means it, the, these bounds are really, really good, right? So you have greater confidence about the intervals and if the, the intervals or the uncertainty in which the, these probability is gonna lie is gonna be, if it's extremely small, that's good for you. Okay? Acha. What is, I mean, I, 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 looking at this example, what is one potential reason why it's clear that this bound is not tight? I mean, 0.2197 say, I know come ho guys, my coffee come hoga. What do you think that is? A, a glaring there's a there, there's a factor here. G Isha. Sir, the variance. Not the variance. It is something that we used somewhere in the in the Sorry. proof above. So X naught. No. G Mas. double tail wali cheese ke wo Exactly. Right, it's so a double tail wali cheese, right? We, the fact that we have ignored this, we say that this is greater than zero, so let's just ignore this altogether, okay? So if I had not ignored this altogether, I could have actually concluded that the probability, that the probability that X is greater than equal to 110, plus the probability that X is less than or equal to 46, this is less than 0.2197. I mean, that's a valid bound as well, right? And, and, and this may actually be very, very tight, right? Because we're saying that the, the probability that, us, that uh, somebody lives to be above 110 or dies before 46. Okay, it dies before 46. That is upper bounded by 0.2197. And some, the probability that, some, that people die uh, uh, in, in less than 46 years of age, that may be non-negligible, right? And that in fact is non-negligible. I mean, the, the, the death rates are, where are they? Especially in our country. In which age are they? Right? Kis, kis age mein hote developing world. So the, the, those are either in the childhood, right? No, so, so just, uh, so infant mortality is, is a big problem in the developing world, right? So, so, it, so many, many children die before they reach the age of one right? in, in the developing world, right? Um, and per, then old age may death say. Okay? So this may not be non-negligible, right? So this may be, uh, a significant, a significant amount is 0.2197, 
may actually have a contribution from the probability that people die in less than 46 years of age, right? And, but the problem for us was, Katie, what is the probability that somebody live, lives to be above 110? That's a valid bound, nevertheless, right? But we know that in that 0.2197, there is no contribution to less than 46 years of age. Ab, in dono ke mein kya distribution that we don't know. Right? But bottom line is, uh, it's still, because we have more information, we have the variance available as well. Okay? Because we have the variance available, uh, and because of that, the this this bound turns out to be tighter than the Markov's inequality. Okay? Any questions here? Okay, so the last bound we're going to consider is something called the Chernoff bound. So for for the Chernoff bound, we need something called the moment generating function, and moment generating functions are something we've not covered explicitly in the class. Um, and, and that's pretty straightforward. I mean, so I'm, I'm going to skip that as a reading assignment. Um, and that's there in the textbook. So a moment generating function is defined as, and I'm just going to give you the, gen the definition here. Is expected value of e raised to power s times x. So the moment generating function for a random variable capital X is defined as expected value of e raised to power s times x for some s. Okay, so, so the so this is a function of because it's a function, this is a function of what? It's a function of s. Right, and if I just uh, plug in the definition here, so that means mx of s is expected value of e raised to power s times x, which is equal to integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, e raised to power s times small x, fx of x dx. Okay, I mean, all of you are electrical engineers, right? Have you seen something like this before? You obviously should have seen something like this before. I mean, what comes to mind when you see this expression? E raised to power s times x, and then a function of x, and then integral from minus infinity plus infinity. D show it. Laplace. Exactly. This is Laplace. Right. So there is there is a one on one link uh, of the moment generating function with the Laplace transform. So this is, if you will, the Laplace transform of the PDF. So if you think of the PDF as a signal, right? So the moment generating function of that signal, uh, which is a PDF uh, is, or, or the moment generating function of the PDF or the random variable is actually the Laplace transform or linked to the Laplace transform uh, of the PDF. Okay? Except that Laplace is minus, it is minus S times X. I mean, we don't have a minus here. And there's something called the characteristic function, which is related to the Fourier transform, right? And the, I don't, why is it useful? Um, so we're going to skip those discussions for now. Uh, maybe sometime later when it comes, I, I, I can I can mention something about it. Okay. So this is the moment generating function. What the Chernoff bound says is that the probability that the probability that the random variable x is greater than or equal to x naught is less than or equal to minimum over all values of real values of s which are non-negative okay and what do you want to minimize e raised to power minus s times x naught times a moment generating function right so Chernoff bound assumes some additional information as well, not just the mean and 
the uh, the variance, but the moment generating function as well. So it, it would need to know what the moment generating function of the random variable is for for it to be able to compute the bound. Okay. And let's do a proof for this before uh, doing an example. So when you say equation, some of the equation can carry. I mean, so the, it's also important for you to be able to look at an expression. I mean, before you look at the proof and see what it's actually telling you. So what does it tell you? If somebody can explain it, this in in their own words. Okay, what does this tell us? Uh, Khalid, Muhammad Khalid. Khalid, can you hear me? Uh, Salman Nadeem. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, extra uh, uh, like random variable is the moment of like a function. Yeah. Uh, sir, if we have not the probability beyond a certain point, then इसमें ये जो exponential है इसको multiply करना या जो moment है इसके साथ और ऐसे मुझे ये समझ आई है right so this says कि the the tail probability शाना bound says that the tail probability is upper bounded by something and what is that something that something is the is the moment generating function as a function of s times e raised to the minus s times x naught and then you need to optimize this over all s okay so the minimum of this for all values of s is going to be the upper bound yes so exactly mohan khalid that's exactly what it means the tail probability would be less than the minimum value of the exponential multiplied by uh, the moment generating function and the minimum value is calculated over all positive values of s or all non negative values of s okay that's what this chana bound uh, means okay let's do a proof for this quickly and the proof is not that hard so all right so the proof is going to start out with this is spread tail probability probability that x is greater than or equal to x not is equal to integral from x not to infinity uh, and f x of x dx g right. isha um sir i am a bit confused because s is supposed to be complex Otherwise, so when we're taking s to be, I, so I, we're just I, talking I, about the real part. Any, 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 I, I think I said something. S is a real number. Okay. Right. So we're only considering s is real. Otherwise, s is greater than or equal to zero holds no meaning. Yes, that that was the confusion. Okay. So. So we're only considering real, real uh, s over the real side. ठीक है अच्छा सो दिस प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट एक्स इज ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू एक्स नॉट इज द इंटीग्रल ऑफ दिस पीडीएफ फ्रॉम एक्स नॉट टू इंफिनिटी एंड दिस इज इक्वल टू इंटीग्रल फ्रॉम माइनस इंफिनिटी टू इंफिनिटी एफ एक्स ऑफ एक्स टाइम्स यू ऑफ एक्स माइनस एक्स नॉट टाइम्स डी एक्स ठीक है एनी प्रॉब्लम्स हियर राइट आई जस्ट हैव अ यूनिट स्टेप फंक्शन हियर व्हिच इज इक्वल टू 1 For all values of x which are greater than x naught and zero otherwise, so therefore, uh, this integral from x naught to infinity can be uh, can be written in this form. Okay, this may I, I incorporate the unit step function or shifted unit step function. Okay. Acha. Let me look at this this unit step. Right. So. So what does the unit step look like? U of x minus x naught. I I I wish to draw what e is the power. Uh, U of x minus x naught 
लुक्स लाइक सो क्या दिखता है जी अली Jelly, you affects my sec not? No. Uh, Isha, you raise your hand. Sir, is my unit strip function no. x not pay? Yes, that is right. So it's zero for all values of x which are less than x not, and is equal to one for all values of x which are greater than x not. So this is u of x minus x not. Okay. Now. let me draw another function which is an exponential function and this is e raised to power s for x my uh, times x minus x not right and which actually coincides with the unit step exactly on it is intersects or, or exactly on top of it when x equals x not ठीक है तो वट डज एस हैव टू बी डज इट नीड टू बी नेगेटिव और इट डज नीड टू बी पॉजिटिव फॉर दिस इलिस्ट्रेशन टू बी करेक्ट पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव आई Sir, because if it's a growing exponential, yeah, then only can. Yeah, so this is of course s has to be positive because it's a growing exponential. ठीक है and and we can see that the it 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 coincides with the unit step when x equals x naught. Right now, what can I say? Just looking at this graphical illustration. Right. This implies that e raised to power s times x minus x naught. This is always greater than or equal to u of x minus x naught. True. Right. For all values of x, or or I or, or I can say that the the unit step u of x minus x naught is less than equal to e raised to power s. Times x minus x not for all x and for all s is greater than equal to zero. Okay, so it it holds true for s equal to zero. By the way, right? Why is that? So when s because at s equal to zero. We yeah. will have an exponential uh, with the value of it would be one, yeah. and the unit step will also have the value one. Ah, but in some values, it will be like this. I mean, it's not equal to. Both of them are equal. Not equal. Because for for values of x which are less than x not, right? The the yes, uh, only at that point. Yeah, only at that point. Is, exponential is still one, but the unit step is zero. Okay, but the inequality still holds true. Okay, so. so this is an important conclusion here um that this is going to hold true and of course i mean for this to hold true what's important is this s has to be greater than 0 or equal to 0 okay so this is this is important okay now i can plug this in back uh to to my original probability so a probability that x is greater than or equal to x not is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity f x of x times u of x minus x not times dx and i know that u of x minus x not is less than so i can just do this and this is e raised to power S times x minus x naught. अच्छा मुझे बताएं कि why can I go from here to here? Sir, 
sir, because of linearity. Mm. Okay, but there's another major reason for this. Hosefa, what do you think? Is this true or not? Can I please tell you? Um, so it is for as uh, for the conditions that uh, we oh, define. Good, excellent. So for the conditions that we define, um, does any so is there a condition that the this thing needs to satisfy or the integral needs to satisfy for this inequality to hold true? I actually claim that this holds true only because this function. is actually a pdf and there's a certain property that the pdf satisfies because of which i can go from here to here what is that property because of which i can go from here to here so pdf ka integral ye 1 ke equal karta hai na that's not true iski wajah se nahi hota sir idhar hum wo change nahi karenge limits kyun क्योंकि माइनस इनफिनिटी टू इनफिनिटी है या हमने एक्स नॉट तक देखना है ना माइनस इनफिनिटी टू एक्स नॉट तक नहीं जानी चाहिए नहीं सो आई मीन सो दैट्स व्हाट वी डिड इन द बिगिनिंग राइट सो वी रिप्लेस इट विद द यूनिट स्टेप दैट्स व्हाट वी डिड दैट्स व्हाई वी डिड इट आई मीन द रीजन फॉर हैविंग द यूनिट स्टेप इज फॉर दिस इंटीग्रल टू गो फ्रॉम माइनस इनफिनिटी टू प्लस इनफिनिटी एक्सेलेंट चलो दैट्स एन एक्सेलेंट पॉइंट राइट सो दैट्स एक्चुअली द करेक्ट आंसर मास आपका आंसर यही था या कुछ और था यही था गुड राइट इट्स पॉजिटिव खालिद इज ऑल्सो द राइट आंसर एक्चुअली खालिद ने कुछ और जवाब दिया हुआ ओके सो बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट द पी डी एफ इज पॉजिटिव दैट्स वाई आई कैन डू दिस अदरवाइज इफ द पी डी एफ वॉज नॉट गारंटी टू बी पॉजिटिव ऑलवेज राइट और नॉट गारंटी टू बी नॉन नेगेटिव ऑलवेज आई कुड नॉट हैव डन इट आई कुड नॉट हैव डन इट right so that's extremely important to remember okay if the pdf or if this function was positive somewhere and negative somewhere else i could not have done it okay and in fact if i knew that the pdf is always negative or this function is always negative this inequality should have been the other way around right should have been greater than or equal to but the fact that the pdf is positive that's why i can have a less than or equal to sign here okay now so what i get then is this is minus infinity to in plus infinity so let me pull the e raised to power s times x not out uh, minus s times x not out and this is minus infinity to plus infinity this is f x of x e raised to power s times x times dx right so what do you have in this inside the integral here क्यों सलमान राइट दैट्स नथिंग बट दी मोमेंट जनरेटिंग फंक्शन राइट सो इफ आई कैन कंक्लूड हियर आई मीन फ्रॉम द प्रूफ आई मीन विच इज नॉट द कंप्लीट प्रूफ येट I mean, there's one simple point missing, but let's just write the conclusion here from the from our working above that the probability that capital X is greater than or equal to x naught, this is upper bounded by e raised to power minus s times x naught, m times x times s, and the important point here is that this holds true for any s is greater than equal to 0 any real s that i pick up which is non negative jo marzi pick kar lo this inequality is going to hold true theek hai so in order to get for me to get the best bound or the tightest bound which s should i pick up get the point kyun zafa um so the s that basically minimizes the exponential function that we exactly 
right? So the, the point here is that this equation here holds true once again for any value of s which is greater than or equal to zero. No matter what s you choose which is greater than or equal to zero, this is going to hold true. Okay. So in order for me to get the best bound, let me just pick that s which minimizes the right hand side, right? And that will guarantee for me the the tightest bound, right? So the tightest bound or the best bound results when um, e to the power minus s times x naught mx of s is minimum. And this gives us the final proof that this implies the probability that x is greater than or equal to x naught is less than or equal to. Why don't I just choose what value of s to choose uh, to pick, and which should be the one that minimizes the right hand side, right? So e raised to the power minus s times x naught times m times x of s. Okay. And this completes the proof. Okay. Now, perhaps the biggest advantage of the Chernoff's bound is in bounding the Q function, right? Or in our in in finding the CDF. Uh, or, or bounding the CDF or the tail probability of a Gaussian distribution or standard normal distribution, okay? And this is the next example. This is the example that we're going to do, okay? Okay. So if, if, before doing this example, let's just uh, uh, compute the moment generating function. That's that's a solved example in the textbook, but I'm not going to do this here, nevertheless. Uh, so let x be a random variable, which is standard normal, right? zero mean, and unit variance, right? Determine right, the moment generating function for a uh, standard normal distribution. Okay. So what would this be equal to? This is m x of s is equal to equal to what this is integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to power s times x fx of x dx and that is nothing but a standard normal distribution so this is 1 upon root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to power minus x squared by 2 times e raised to power minus s times x actually plus s times x dx actually how do I solve this integral? Hanji, who can help me? So, any ideas? Any any tricks that we can employ? Nazish, Kuzen Miata. The calculus is other Kuyor Kisyorgis and the problem. I mean, so calculus second and better the punching. Uh, Joe Fourier transform is not a bit, I think, overlap problem. Okay, so Fourier transform may, uh, हमने कभी जो है फोरियर डोमेन में निकालते हुए e raised to power t squared का नहीं निकाला कभी भी फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म रिमेंबर राइट एट लीस्ट इन इन द सिग्नल्स व्हेन आई टॉट इट आई e raised to power t यस वी यूज्ड टू फाइंड द फोरियर ट्रांसफॉर्म द लैप्लास ट्रांसफॉर्म फॉर दैट लेकिन e raised to power t squared और माइनस t squared दैट्स वाज नॉट कॉमन एट लीस्ट ठीक है so here I would use a, 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 a trick called completing the squares, okay? and which is fairly simple. Right? So I would, what I would do is, so this is integral from minus infinity to infinity, and this is e raised to power minus 
x squared um, minus 2 times s times x divided by 2. So a simple manipulation yields this answer. Okay? Acha. Then I would say that this upper wali ye expression hai na, exponential ke andar. Let me complete the square here. Right? So this is e raised to power minus x squared x squared minus 2 times s times x plus s squared minus s squared divided by 2 times dx. Right? And why do I do this? It's, it's going to come abhishad ho sakta you clear ho chukau. So what do I get? This is integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. E raised to minus x minus s whole squared divided by 2 times e raised to power plus s squared divided by 2 times dx. Is that clear? Right, so I've, I've lumped these things together, right? So this, I see that this is a whole squared, x minus s whole squared, right? And then this term goes here. Goes here. Okay. Now, can you figure out what this integral is? The Ghazi? Yes, sir. Abham. Q function say approximate value. Yeah, Q, Q function is by the way. I mean, this is integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. Right, so this is e raised to power s squared by 2 times 1 upon root 2 pi integral of minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to power minus x minus s whole squared divided by 2 times dx. G mas. One over. One over, right? Why? Exactly, because it's a Gaussian PDF. And I know that the area under the curve of a Gaussian PDF is one. Okay, so that's basically the trick I, I deploy, right? I know for a fact that the area under the Gaussian PDF is one, and I use that fact to simplify uh, this and to evaluate this integral, okay? And from here, my conclusion, therefore, is that the moment generating function for this random variable or the standard normal random variable is equal to e raised to power s squared by 2. All right. Now, given this moment generating function, let's do this example. An example is okay, let x let x be a standard normal random variable. Okay. Um, so for which the moment generating function is given as e raised to power s squared by two. Um, find a bound on the, find the churn of bound, determine churn of bound. On this, right? Which remember essentially is a Q function, right? So the, so this is the solution. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to x naught, remember, is nothing but the q function evaluated where? Evaluated at x naught. And I know from Chernoff's bound that this is less than or equal to minimum over positive values of s. And this is e raised to power, uh, e raised to power k minus s times x naught times the moment generating function. And let me just plug in the moment generating function from up above. This is minimum s is greater than or equal to zero. Um, e raised to power s squared by two minus 
S times X naught. Okay. So how do I now minimize this over S? Kya khayal hai? How do I minimize? So how do I find the value of S which minimizes this expression? And this is just an optimization problem. Derivative. Derivative, all right. And I, 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 there, there are two things I could do. I, I could take the derivative of this exponential function, okay? Uh, but that's not really necessary. I, I know that the exponential function is a monotonically increasing function, okay? So from, because, that is a monotonically increasing function since e raised to power anything is monotonically increasing. e raised to power s squared by two minus s times x naught is minimized when s squared by two minus s times x naught is minimized. Right, so essentially, I mean, minimizing the e raised to power something is the same as minimizing that something. Because of the fact that the exponential functions are monotonically increasing functions, right? So in order, so I just need to differentiate in order to find where the minimum resides. I just need to differentiate um, this thing here. S squared by two minus S times X naught. Uh, this is S minus X naught. And in order to find the minimum, let me just equate this to zero, which implies that S equals X naught. Right. So one of the things I forgot to mention here was that for X naught being greater than or equal to zero, right? X naught has to be positive, right? For this bound to hold true. So because X naught is positive, the minima that I found was indeed a positive value. Okay. And therefore, and therefore I can conclude that the probability that x is greater than or equal to x naught is less than or equal to e raised to power x naught squared by two minus x naught squared. Right. So here's the Chernoff bound that q of x is less than or equal to e raised to power minus x naught squared by two. Right, this is a famous Chernoff bound or approximation, if you will, um, for the Q function, right? So where in situations where we don't really want to numerically integrate or leave it, uh, leave it out in, the, in terms of a Q function, we often use this bound, which is the Chernoff bound. So this is a popular usage of the bound. Okay, any questions here? Okay, um, so this, this holds true for X naught is greater than zero. Uh, so that just, uh, uh, one question that uh, what would have been like, if there wasn't any condition that X naught is greater than zero, then how we would have gone about this? Okay, if if x naught was not greater than zero, like if the, this condition did not exist, like it could either be positive or negative. उसे मसला हो जाता है. मसला क्या हो जाता है? पहली बात ये कि if you plug in an x naught which is negative here, I mean, what value do you get on the right hand side? Mm. Something which is greater than one. Yes. Okay, x naught is negative, right? Actually, sorry, sorry, my, my, my bad. 
right? So if X naught was negative, right? So this will not be a valid bound, right? So yeah, this is not applicable. So let me, let me say it out explicitly here. This is not applicable. when x naught is less than zero. And why it's important for you to know why this is not applicable. So then the proof that we've done above, the optimization that we've done above, there is one particular point where the fact that x naught is greater than zero is applied. Otherwise, if x naught was less than zero, the, the proof above does not hold true. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a subtle point there. Okay, uh, Isha, agar aapka, uh, question here, so just let me hold, hold yeah, that out and let me talk to his FI. I just wanted to add, ke, isn't it because S is turning out to be equal to X naught and which is yeah. why X naught can't be negative. Exactly. Okay, so Josefa, um, do you get it? Uh, yes, sir. Right, so here's the point. Ke, the optima that we computed what turned out to be S equals X naught. And if X naught was negative, then essentially would have meant KG the optima ko jo mila hai na, that is for a for a negative value of S. But but I know that the bound does not hold true for negative values of S. Mm -hmm. okay? And in that case, you can actually show, and, and I, I don't want to go there, ke us case mein the optimum value of S is actually S equals zero. Because the function can cave hai, uh, convex hai, convex hai, to phir wo increasing slope hoti hai and so on and so forth. Just those arguments. And S equals zero is the best choice. And for S equals zero, um, this turns out to be equal to one. So the best bound that you're getting is one. Okay, sir. Okay. But I believe there are other things you can do. Uh, if X naught was negative, okay, you maybe use some symmetry properties of the Q function. Mm. I'd have to think about this a little bit more. Or um, usme hosak that will lower bound derive or you instead of an upper bound. But that's interesting things to think about at least. Okay. So this uh, once again uh, the the, uh, the con important conclusion here is that this Chernobyl bound is applicable only when X naught is positive. It's not applicable when X naught is negative, right? Now there are other bounds, by the way, there, there's something called a modified churn of bound, right? And um, uh, I mean, that's not there in the textbook, but you may be able to find them in, in others. I mean, I'm in reference book maybe not uh, but I, I recall studying that uh, sometime, I, I don't know when, maybe somewhere in grad school. Modified churn of bound minus is actually, so modified churn of bound, if I recall correctly, is a lot tighter. And that just says Q of X is less than or equal to half. Here is to a minus X naught squared by two. Right, so it's introduces that half there as well. And that's a still a valid bound. So modified churn of bound, is a tighter version of the Chernobyl bound. Okay? And these are used very, very often in, 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 in competition, in, in analysis. Okay? Um, Do you have sir, so the Chernobyl bound is only applicable when X naught is positive? Uh, for this particular case, for, for oh, this okay. Gaussian case. For this Gaussian case. Okay, sir. Okay? Not, not in general. Okay. okay, that's important. Okay, so we, we do have time left, but I'm going to stop here, nevertheless. So instead of just this is we've wrapped up this chapter. Uh, instead of starting a new chapter, I'm, I'm going to stop our discussions here. Uh, if there are any questions you have for me, let me know uh, whether they be about the homework. So first of all, about this particular topic, if there are any questions. Okay.